Recently, it has been brought to my attention that there are unfavorable practices being executed by persons unknown to us at this time with both French and Dutch registered vehicles who are collecting waste on our, Dutch, our French counterpart and discarding the collected waste at the Dutch sanitary landfill. As our challenges with the landfill persist, immediate investigation efforts were in place to monitor these activities in order to enforce preventive practices, preventative practices, sorry. Security personnel are placed at the border checkpoints to register these vehicles and their number plates. As the matter is still being investigated, I hereby encourage a permanent termination of these practices as it further comprises the management of the sanitary landfill with unwanted and uncalculated influx functioning of the Dismissal Advisory Committee or the DAC. Um, I think it's helpful to understand what the role of the Dismissal Committee is. Um, it is an advisory committee which advises the Secretary General of VSA based on requests for dismissal both collective and individual that are submitted to the Department of Labor Affairs. So it's important to recognize this is an advisory body. So it, it provides advice, it doesn't actually make the decisions. Ultimately, that decision is made by the Secretary General. The old committee was active until January of 2018 when the members submitted their resignation. All of this was planned. All of this is in keeping with plans to modernize the functioning of the DAC or Dismissal Advisory Committee. This is based actually on an El Beham which was published in June of 2016 which modernizes the functioning of the DAC in consultation and this modernization process, the, the items that were agreed upon, were again done in consultation with employers and employee representatives. It updated procedures, um, put in place a, a code of conduct, provides guidelines, simple things like attendance requirements, and there are some changes. So for example, there are no more hearings in the new structure. In the old structure, there was possibility for um, people to come in to provide testimony. In the new structure, it's all going to be evidence-based, based on written um, testimonies, and a, re a report will be generated. Um, also important is that functions um, are done, the decisions are made in a timely basis. So in other words, from the time the requests are submitted, the goal is to provide an answer within 12 weeks. The advice from the dismissal committee is then sent to the SG, where the SG makes the final decision. Um, I think it's interesting to note that there was already a meeting held um, March 8th. This was an introductory meeting where they discussed procedures, roles, and tasks with the new incoming members. Um, I did take note of the comment that was made in the newspaper earlier this week um, where uh, union representatives spoke about the dismissal committee. Um, I think it's interesting to note that the WIFL was aware of the meeting. Um, as a matter of fact, a representative of Weifel was present. Um, you know, I think we have an excellent relationship with the labor unions. I did meet with Mr. Thompson on the same day on Monday just to make sure that we were all on the same page, and I'm happy to report that, you know, we are very much um, on the same page, perhaps just some miscommunications in terms of, of who actually attended. But um, we've made very, very um, strong efforts to make sure that all social partners are well informed and involved in the process. We are currently making arrangements now for training sessions and workshops for the new committee members coming in to make sure that they're up to date with the, their rules, their responsibilities, legislations, etc. And we expect that the new dismissal committee will be in place um, any day now. Actually, we're just waiting on the El Bay to be published in the newspaper. The makeup of the committee, it, com it consists of four representatives from employee organizations, including four substitute members. It also includes four employer organization representatives and their substitute members. In addition, government has a chairperson, deputy chair, secretary, and deputy secretary. These are non-voting positions, um, and they are the ones who chair the meetings. Keep in mind that the goal of the dismissal committee is to arrive at consensus. So although we speak about voting, again, the idea is to try and come to, through discussions, dialogue, a, a mutually agreed upon um, recommendation or advice.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And without any further ado, I would like now to invite the star of the evening, the philosopher of humor, Fernando Clark, ladies and gentlemen. After the hurricane, I see this man on a bicycle with a king-size mattress balancing in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I see... Oh, wait, Daddy, you're giving away too much of the show. The people have to come to the show to get a rest. But, Fernando, what a meaning of you? <laughs> but what it means Daddy, is... stop, stop, stop. The people have to come to the show to know the meaning of in you. Well, they could get tickets by Big D on a park film, SOS Radio in Marigat, or even Van Dorp Bookstore in Simpson Bay. Saturday, March 24th, under the tent of Port of Plaisance. And then you fall off the bike. <laughs> GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Rummy's Roof Repair Program is, a, is scheduled to start on the first four homes this week. The four recipients of this relief are pensioners and mentally challenged applicants. A delay was experienced as we changed from purchasing the materials from overseas to purchasing them locally, which will have a positive effect on our local economy. Last week, Monday, I met with most NGOs to discuss and be updated on the progress thus far. And today we meet again in this press conference to inform the general public on the status thus far. On my right, I have SG Secretary General, Mr. Lewis Brown, and on my left, the head of new projects and team leader of the home slash roof repair project, Mr. Kurt Ruan, Kurt Ruan, sorry. <laughs> Since uh, this program kicked off, this far, approximately 560 applicants uh, has uh, requested assistance. Uh, the list started out with, uh, in the recover in the emergency phase, and, uh, and it is always I like to break it down in three phases. After the hurricane struck St. Martin and everyone was devastated. I, that is called, among parties, the emergency phase. Right now we are in the recovery phase, and then eventually we goes into the reconstruction phase. As a result of the, recover, the emergency phase, some 950 plus applicants uh, came to the government building and uh, requested assistance in one form or the other. I mean, let it be by means of food vouchers, roof repairs, etc. That list uh, has been narrowed down and was screened from uh, applicants who has been insured and uninsured. And it came about that approximately 560 applicants who are seeking uh, government assistance has, are uninsured. And that uh, uh, group ranges from senior citizens to unemployed and also folks who are mentally challenged. Uh, immediately thereafter, the Ministry of Romi put a program together whereas uh, assessment has been carried out, technical assessment teams, because uh, within the ministry there are policy and guidelines. I don't know if one could recall, right after hurricane, uh, people were allowed to build 
once the home would have been assessed by government, where, whereas it would have been declared uh, bewoundbar of unbewoundbar, that's uh, the system would be in the O. And with regards to the home repair project, that same uh, approach continues, whereas the technical assessment is being carried out by uh, the Vromi roof repair team. And this far, approximately 170 homes has been technically assessed and found fit to, uh, whereas they meet the criteria of uh, the rebuilding back of the roof. And when I say meet the criteria, because the Council of Ministers has established a policy document in bringing the home back to a livable condition. And uh, there has also been a budget that was targeted to the home in amount of some $20,000, but we are now revisiting that number because certain homes, upon uh, assessing these homes, we have noticed that uh, the damages include with regards to the repairs of these homes goes to an um, excess of up to um, $25,000 to $27,000. So that's something uh, that we are, as a team, together with uh, the Honorable Minister Hitterson, we are busy evaluating and also to make sure that all of those residents that once government undertake a job, it will be taken from the onset and completed uh, to its, in its entirety that we wouldn't uh, run out of funds or whatsoever. As the process continues with assessment, uh, also uh, contractors has been approached. Uh, there was informed in the open process and has uh, shown their interest. Approximately in the initial phase, based on a public advertisement, some 30 contractors have shown interest. In that list now uh, of those contractors who has been vetted, the list has now narrowed down to some 16. And with uh, the project which is being kicked off, those contractors will be approached and they will be asked in an open process to give us uh, pricing for the homes that we are looking to get moving. So um, as we uh, move along, I mean, it might, one might say that the government process is taking a little too long, but it is just that we are crossing all T's and cross and dotting all I's to make sure that it is a, also a transparent um, process that takes place. And when I say transparent, it's because <coughs> the World Bank is also involved in the sense that the funds that are being allocated to the roof repair program will be considered reimbursable. So in, with the funds being reimbursable, there are also procedures and guidelines attached there too. But nevertheless, as the minister said, uh, this week we are kicking off uh, full force, having the contractors go out and uh, give us uh, quotes and estimations for the relevant homes in order to get moving in uh, together. It's also good to say that we are partnering with the various NGOs that are here, the UNDP, the Red Cross, ADRA, Salvation Army, SMDF. So it's great that to have all of you all on board and that uh, we all are kicking off at the same pace uh, with the same goal in mind. Martin are switching to a more rewarding experience. The Whip MasterCard Fun Miles credit card, better known as My Card. Earn one fun mile for every $2 spent, even abroad and online. This will quickly get you a ton of fun miles to redeem for travel, shopping, food, fuel, and much more. But there's more to My Card worldwide acceptance, an EMV chip for extra security, and 250 free fun miles with first use. Switch to my card today at WIB. Action with some assault on that chair, flip over, turn up, scramble up a shoe, and pitch it. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a woman's best friend. If you say no, she's such a call me a liar. 
Listen, man, what kind of friend you be, man? My wife there having a heart attack and you here scaring my children? Food can't do it. I said myself, I'm paying for this. Next thing I fall, I'll come tell me, don't worry, man. Eat, eat, Frank. So I just pay for this. I want to turn a politician. You think I would be a good politician? You say, boy, Fernando, if you could do it, you could do it too. As unions definitely um, feel that the workers should not continue to be victims of a different type of hurricane effect. Basically, um, what I'm referring to is a lot of the employers are using the situation now um, to either, well, get rid of their workers or to downsize their companies or even to stop paying wages to their workers. <clears throat> I can imagine it would be difficult if you don't have an income, but big companies here in St. Martin have made profit over a lot of years, so they are not, as I would call it, hand to mouth to be able to say that they cannot buffer a certain amount of that type of liability why rebuilding and restructuring to be able to reopen their business <clears throat> in that aspect the unions also need to find clarity on what is going on the communication the social dialogue should always be open with the unions we are noticing that a number of companies would want to go direct to the employees, their workers, and make them certain offers that basically is not in keeping with the law of the land. So to avoid such situations, we are always advising the workers <clears throat> to check with your union if you're not a unionized worker, check with the labor office. In that respect, a number of workers from the group of Mahu, Sonesta, and also Great Bay, they did exactly that. They checked with the labor office, and this resulted based on their complaints in a meeting last week where the representatives of the company, the unions, were able to sit and meet and discuss the way forward at the labor department with what are basically the bottlenecks, what are the rights and privilege of the workers, and what is the status of some of the workers where it pertains to their insurance, their sickness and health insurance. One of the things that was remarkable was that the group paid the workers up to, I believe, the end of February before the training or even when they started now with the training on their institution and then all of a sudden it, steam, it seems that the stipend for attending classes, the stipend that was given um, to the workers that became the substitute for their salaries. Um, in the initial stage, uh, an agreement was made for a three-day work week. It always variates, depends on what the workers agree with their employers. A number of employers and employees have reached an agreement of a four days, a cut in the work week, which would bring them to four days, in the case of Mahu, seemingly that became three days. Three days work week were being paid every quincena. Now that the stipend is being um, given for attending the courses um, at the training institution, the salaries have been stopped. It is, however, regrettable to hear that management was then saying 
that, yes, I need my workers, so I'm not going to dismiss my workers. My workers are valuable to me. I was able to maintain the workers in maintenance and some of the workers that was interested has now been placed also with security because we were forced to, con to consider terminating our contract with the security company. But however, the, I can understand, let's say, the housekeeping department and some other departments would not be up and functioning because of the magnitude of the damage. However, this stipend kicked in and then all of a sudden the salaries were stopped. And the reason being that financially they couldn't carry it anymore because, you know, their funds were just not available, there was no business, etc. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. In my opinion, everything is perfect and you would be great for the job. But I see here that there's a two-year gap in your resume. What did you do? I was hospitalized for mental illness. Oh, mental illness? I've undergone treatment and I have a wonderful family that supports me. Well, that is good news. No, no, it's fine. I'm recovered. We'll contact you, okay? For a better understanding of mental health and what you can do to stop mental health stigma, please go to the Mental Health Foundation's website at www.mhf-sxm.com um, Deliver this special award to none other than our DJ here this evening, DJ Easy Rick. Give him a round of applause. Come on up front here. He come up carefully. He think I might say, April Fool! No, no, no. This is serious and... Um, the vice president is gonna normally you would get a kiss too, but um okay, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Denisio, on behalf of Chuchubi Foundation, we take this honor to give you a little honoring too. You have given so much to the community, and we have heard you have celebrated your fiftieth birthday. That's half of a century. So we decided, on behalf of the Chubi Foundation, to give you a token of our love for the wonderful DJ music that you give us on a yearly basis, and to the community and other, other organizations with other dances that being held. So on behalf of us, with our love, we present this token to you. Congrats for your 50th birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Pedro Wilson, the Chubi Foundation take the honor to present this annual reward to you for safety and protection. And it reads as follows. The Chubi Foundation recognizes, sorry, this, the glare from the light recognizes Mr. Pedro Wilson for your contribution in the field of safety and protection as a firefighter on St. Martin, Aruba Day, March 18, 2018. <laughs> Along with this plaque, 
We have a little envelope as well that goes along with it. We hope you make it as good use, personally, or something in the community that you probably had in mind to do. And we thank the staff that came to support him, the fire chief, he left. Oh, Mr. Richardson, we thank you all so much for being here to honor our honoree for today, March 2018. Thank you again. Okay, present to you. Wow. The, 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 they call me the crying, uh, the, the crying shift leader. Because <laughs> on moments like these, I get very emotional, and I expect, especially when you're not expecting it. I am deeply and very honored, I'm happy, elated. Just, you know, don't have words to really say. And I want to thank um, the chief. I want to thank me the opportunity for being a part of such an organization. Fire department is a team effort. And without the staff or my colleagues, I could not have been accepting such an award. It has not been an easy 30 years for all that we have to go through. As you can see, this afternoon I thought I would have never made it here because the time that I was planning on leaving to go home and get dressed, my clothes are still on the bed, shoes, everything ready. A nice outfit. But <laughs> here am I. I want to thank you all for being here. <laughs>